Quest would like to welcome everyone to Mobile Data Capture, Key to Business Automation, presented by White Light Group and Quest Online Learning as part of the 2013 Mobility Series. And for this session, we're joined by a few different representatives from White Light Group. And at this time, I'd like to turn the session over to Mark Modricker to um, give a little bit of an introduction for us. Mark, it's all yours. Thank you. Derek, uh, good afternoon, everybody at Quest. Um, we're here in Chicago, Illinois, uh, and I'm joined by a few folks in North Carolina. Uh, our, our strategic partners at MICO, we have Gotham Padian with us today. We also have Pete Ransom, and it's myself and Mary Lou Jagger from White Light Group. Next. Everybody just want to do a quick uh, few slides here, let you know who we are, what we do. Uh, some of you may be familiar with the White Light Group. We are an Oracle Goal Partner, uh, primarily focused with J.D. Edwards over the years. But uh, our business uh, has expanded quite a bit. And myself, I'm head of the Mobility Solutions Group. So I want to talk to you this afternoon about uh, mobile e-forms uh, and take you through uh, a little bit about the product and how it might help you in your organization. Uh, so the White Light Group helps organizations use information systems such as the MICO product as a more effective strategic business tool. We are, of course, Midwest-based. Our headquarters is in uh, Milwaukee, and uh, we also have a satellite office in Oak Brook just outside of Chicago. But we do have customers uh, around the United States and actually uh, implementations uh, globally. We're certified implementers and resellers of a variety of solutions, including the MICO eForm solution. Next. So what do we do? Uh, we're focused in, in uh, primarily four different silos of uh, business practice. Uh, the one on the left there is our business consulting practice. Uh, as you see, it's primarily around strategy, process, optimization. We do an awful lot of work with companies that are undergoing mergers, acquisitions, business transformation type processes. The second key silo of our uh, product offering or our service offering is packaged software implementations. We are an Oracle Gold Partner. Uh, we do specialize with J.D. Edwards and J.D. Edwards World. So we've been doing implementations and uh, support for customers a little over 12 years now. And then uh, over in our third silo of uh, products and, and services, we do offer cloud solutions services with Oracle, of course, moving toward the sales cloud. Uh, we are also specialist in Fusion, Fusion middleware, both from the design, technical implementation, et cetera. Our fourth silo of products, which uh, what we're talking about today really fits into our mobility solutions group is focused on mobile data collection and e-forms. We also do custom mobile design and development work. And we offer mobile ancillary services, such as translation services. And BYOD is also a, uh, a very uh, a hot part of our practice right now. Uh, we are a certified Citrix shop. So these are the uh, four products down below that we really are focusing on. Uh, today. Next. These are some of our customers and some of our customer segments. As you can see, we've had a lot of experience in many different verticals of customers, but do an awful lot of work, obviously, with J.D. Edwards in the manufacturing, logistics, environments, and these companies are a lot of household names you'll recognize. And we've either done their implementations, we're currently supporting them, and we're involved in a lot of different facets of their business. Next slide. So I'm going to uh, pass the control over to Gotham Padian. And Gotham is our strategic partner that runs sales and marketing for MICO. So Gotham, it's all yours. Thank you, Mark. Hope everybody can hear me okay. I am pleased to be here on this webinar and looking forward to educating you all about some of the work that Micro has been doing in this space for about 13 years. And we're glad to be partnered with Wetlight -like Group to bring you these solutions that are going to help you automate your business process using mobile devices. Now, the technology that we've developed over 13 years of doing this is called MyForms. And the MyForms software platform, quite simply, 
helps you create form applications. And these, we call them form applications because there's all kinds of code that goes under these that makes them sing and dance and do anything you can imagine, and deploy them onto a variety of different devices. These can be designed using a design tool. That's a graphical WYSIWYG PowerPoint-like tool. There's, there you can deploy these through our server product from a central location to thousands of devices and users, controlling permissions and authentication and security, and deploy those to actual tech client applications that are native to Windows, iOS, Android, or an HTML5 thin client. And this can all this piece of the platform can also make sure nothing is ever missing or incorrect. Because how often do you have a form or a piece of paper come back that's missing a signature or that just flat out has something wrong? Right? And that happens all the time when we've got to deal with the consequences. So as a result, these different pieces of the puzzle kind of come together in our platform and make it a platform that can be customized for you by the wildlife group to really fit your needs and produce the kind of process automation that you require. Thanks, Gotham. And I, uh, I think we have a poll ready to open up for all the attendees that I'd just like to quickly open up for everyone. And I'll leave that open for about 15 seconds and then pass um, control back over to you in just a moment. Thanks, Dad. And then um, the polls are open for all the attendees out there. So I'll leave that open for just a few seconds and then um, share the results with everyone. And this is the part where I whistle my elevator music if I can, right? <laughs> exactly. All right, and now just a couple more seconds. And it looks like um, so far the majority of um, our attendees are actually, they've got too much paper flying around as it is. And so I'm going to go ahead and share those results with everyone now. All right, looks like we got 71% um, think they've got too much paper. Let's see, 29% are definitely all hip and cool and electronic around where they are working. So Gotham, I'm passing the presenter control back over to you. You can go ahead and uh, continue on. Thank you, Derek. That's, that's certainly interesting. There's, uh, despite all the technology we have today already, it seems like we're still really paper-bound. And so part of the goal today is to talk about how we can get, get you completely off the paper. And I have, we have some examples of companies we've done this with, so we're not talking theoretical here. So you've talked and learned a little bit about the software that we've developed over 13 years. I want to talk through how it all fits together. So let's start here in the bottom left corner where you've got your paper forms. In fact, you've got too many of these. Well, what you can do here is work with the wildlife group to use our design tool, our design studio as we call it, to drag and drop and convert all the form applications that you'd like and, and set them up in the system so then they can be deployed to our server product. The server product that you see in the middle can be deployed either on-premise, on your actual server machines, or they can be hosted in the cloud, wherever you'd like them to be. And either way, what the server product is doing is helping you manage users in the system, make sure the right users have access to the right form applications, make sure that all of those are being permissioned and versioned correctly, as well as authentication is all being controlled here from a central source. So you can manage as many hundreds or thousands of users as you need to from one location. The server can also connect to these back-end databases, specifically, in this case, uh, Oracle, J.D. Edwards, or any other Oracle databases that you're using or any other applications you're using, and push out these form applications onto different devices. So if you look on the right-hand side here, you've got all your different devices with the different native clients or thin clients that can capture information either online or completely offline and disconnected. So this is a big piece of the puzzle here is even in today's hyper-connected world, we're not always connected to the internet. So especially people going out in the field and in remote locations, you're going to be disconnected. And so being able to elegantly sync data after you've been disconnected back is an important part of any system you look at. So make sure that system can do that in an elegant way and a secure way too. And as these applications are pushed through our server product, drawing on information from the backend database, keep in mind you can pre-populate these forms. Think about the last time you sat in the doctor's office. They probably pushed the same piece of paper in front of you and said, tell me about your name, your address, your medical history, over and over again. Chances are you've got a record in that electronic medical system. 
you should be able to put your name in there. The system does a lookup, comes back, and populates everything that you have on file. So that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the pre-population here. That's going to save a lot of time producing efficiencies and make end users really love the system, which is a big part of it. So now that we're over here, we've collected all the data we need. We can actually transmit that when we're connected to the internet without any additional effort. When we're connected, we're automatically transmitting that data. That can be sent to a manager. If you look at the bottom here in the workflow, this is where a manager is sitting at their desk. They can pull up this information, review it. If they don't like it, they can send it back to the person in the field saying, hey, you know what? You didn't get that quite right. Make this change. Or they can approve it. And if they approve it, that's when the information gets exported out of the system as a PDF document, a CSV file, an XML file, pretty much any type of format that you desire, and pretty much into wherever you want it to go. It could be right back in your Oracle system. It could be another database. It could be three or four different places all at once. So the system, my forms, can serve as your universal front-end data capture system feeding as many other systems as you like and updating all those tables and databases. So that's the overall architecture of the system. The different pieces come together, uh, the form designer, the server product, the different client applications, and all these different pieces can be configured for you as appropriately needed by the Wildlife Group, which was a certified MICO authorized partner. And this is all built on top of our own .NET SDK. And we've got a software development kit that lets you get even more development happy on this side. So I'll pause that for a moment, let you guys sink in all this information, and jump over to the next slide. So it's all fine and good that we've captured all this information in a very user-friendly, effective way. The next question is, what happens to that information? The big part of our flexibility in the system is in the kinds of data we can capture. We are, we're talking about taking photographs, getting barcodes, voice recognition, touch, handwriting, you name it. But we're also talking about doing that on any device and then sending that data wherever it needs to go, whether it's an Oracle backend, you know, whether it's SQL Server, whether it's a document management system, whether it's all of these places simultaneously. So the flexibility is absolutely what makes this your universal front-end data capture system. So why even bother to implement technology like this? What's in it, really, for you guys? If I had to guess, I want to say at least half or more of the people on the call today, your process probably looks like this, where you've, got, you've designed a form, whether that's in Word or PDF or whatever other format it's in. That form is being printed in some shape or form. It's being sent out to people in the field uh, or, or around the hospital or around the retail store. They're completing it, pieces of paper, routing it back either by mail or fax or some other method where someone's scanning it, typing all the information to a database or computer system or J.D. Edwards. And then you want to hold on to the paper, a copy, in case someone asks questions, and who knows how long you store that. So your process may not be exactly this, but chances are it's some variation of this. Now, it turns out this is a pretty expensive process, just from the processing steps alone. And there's an industry association called AIM that did a white paper that we can distribute to you, and they quantify the cost of all these steps just from processing a piece of paper through these steps. Forget the fact that if you make a mistake when you're typing something in, you've got to go back and fix it. Forget the slowness of reporting all this data. So just from the processing alone, it turns out it costs about $5 for each paper form to do this. You can imagine when you start thinking about the number of paper forms you're processing, how those dollars and cents are adding up. You can also imagine when you cut out a bunch of the steps in this process, the kinds of efficiencies you're going to gain, not just in cost savings, but in getting critical business information quicker and getting information uh, productively to people, not having them spend time on paperwork that's not that value adding. So a number of different benefits here to making this kind of process automation happen. 
through mobile business process automation here. So let me stop here because I know that Derek has another poll he'd like to run here. Yep, and I'm launching that for everybody now, and so um, you should see the, the poll options up on your screen for you. And I'll leave that open for just a couple seconds, and then um, go ahead and share that with everybody again. Folks, this is a juicy question, so don't miss out on your chance to answer it. All right, and I'll leave that open for about five more seconds, and then go ahead and share that with everyone. All right, and now it looks like 83% of respondents um, do have that on their short-term plans, but um, right now, but the uh, another major, or excuse me, another minority, is um, not really looking to start talking to make make it happen yet. All right, and then I'm um, going ahead and taking that down, and so Gotham, you should um, be able to share your screen again for everybody. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for participating, everybody. Isn't it fun when everybody participates in these questions? Such a nice interactive exercise. Thanks for taking the poll there. So now that we've talked about what our technology is, we've talked about what the business case is for investing in this kind of technology and these types of projects, well, let's take a closer look at what it really is. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to quickly share my desktop with you guys, and I'm going to show a real live example of how this functions. And what you'll see is I'm going to open up an application on my desktop. I'm going to first show you our Windows client, which works on a Windows laptop and a tablet, any type of Windows environment. And then we'll look at some of our other systems as well. When I go ahead and log in, you'll see I can log in under different user profiles. And if I was connected to a server, this is when I would sync and get all my applications, permissions, and whatnot. In this case, I'm going to run this from a, a disconnected demo machine. And when I open up my application here and the list of forms I have access to, you'll see I've got a whole laundry list of stuff. You know, I got everything from looking at some kind of railroad inventory to restaurant inspections to heck even you know a little smiley face test here. But for now, what I'd like to start off with is let's pretend I work for Geico or State Farm or maybe even the Department of Transportation in the state of Illinois. When I go ahead and open up this form, and by the way, you can control who has access to what forms, I'm being assigned a list of accidents that I need to go investigate today. So based on my preference, you know, based on where I am or any number of different factors, I can pick the first one I want to go to. And this list can come from a database. This list can come from a CSV file. It can come from a variety of sources. So when I pick where I'm going today, this is going to open up a form application with all the information pre-populated. Now, I'm using a Surface Pro tablet from Microsoft to do this demo. If I actually put this in a tablet mode, this is going to look like one A4 size piece of paper, not requiring any scrolling up and down. And because it's a little bit small on the WebEx screen, we'll go ahead and put it back in a laptop mode for now. And so you can see it a little bit larger. And a couple other things to note here. I can fill out this form using my keyboard and mouse and typing. I can use my stylus and write on the screen. Or I could even use touch. I have a fourth option here is finger touch. So for now, let's go ahead and use the stylus mode. And what I can do is write on the screen. And you'll see the blue highlights going to show up when I write on it. So now that my information is pre-populated, I can find where I'm going. First, first step to getting somewhere is to know how to get there. So now I'll pull up Google Maps, and I'll pull up the directions if I need to, and or use my GPS on the device, and you know figure out how to get there. Once I've got to the location, I can do a little diagram that shows what happened at the accident site. So there's my car. It's crashed into my tree. There's a poor guy lying on the road, and he's bleeding. Boy. Kind of tragic. And as I get down here, I want, so now that I finished my artistic rendition, I'm going to start capturing other information. I'm writing on the screen with my stylus. And notice I'm not being neat in the box. And as I write on the screen, the system is performing real-time handwriting recognition. If I want to make a change, I simply write on top of a letter to make a change. I scratch it off. 
I flip over into my eraser mode and go ahead and erase it. So it's just as simple as that. It's very intuitive. It's paper-like. It doesn't take a lot of training. So people really end up adopting this in a big way because to them it feels like they're paper, but it's offering even more benefits. And one of those benefits, here's one example, business rules. All these yellow fields, these are required fields. If I don't fill out a required field and try to hit the finish button, I'm going to get this error message that says you can't finish the form. Well, what are all the things I'm missing? Turns out there's three things missing on here. If I go ahead, and you'll see how they're flagged in yellow. And they're flagged in yellow because it's telling the user, make sure you fill this up. Now I've got two. Right? I go ahead and put a telephone number in here. I'm going to give away Mark's telephone number that I made up so you can call him and ask him about how to go paperless. <laughs> now, there you go. Now you've got one. So you're kind of tracking all these business rules in real time regardless of being connected. Now, a couple other things here to note. I can throw a zip code in here. And as I throw a zip code in here, notice that the system is going to do a lookup to a database. Let's go ahead and correct that. In lovely Durham, North Carolina, look at that. It just wanted to look up the database and came back and said, oh, you must be in Durham, North Carolina. So you can do lookups to databases live and fill out all the information you need. Uh, I've also got a business rule here that says if my driver's state is Washington and North Carolina and the license number is entered, the date of birth must meet certain minimum age requirements for that state. So if I put in the driver's license number, and let's say I put in a date of birth that doesn't make any sense yesterday, all of a sudden it highlights in red. It's giving me a warning saying, that doesn't make any sense if I can fix your mistake. I go back and fix that mistake, and the red highlighting goes away. Kind of shows you how it makes sure that you never have garbage in the system because it never gets in. 99% of it is going to be screened out right at the point of entry. And if all that wasn't good enough to get your juices flowing, we can capture all kinds of other multimedia content as well. How about an audio clip? Going up to someone and asking them what happened. Well, I was having a ball watching this Quest webinar, and I ran into a tree. My audio file is part of the form. How about that? And I've got rich data. Well, other things I can do here, let's say I go ahead and take a photograph. I can turn on my camera. And when I turn on my camera, take a photograph, it's going to pop right in to my uh, form right there. Now let me stop and ask uh, Derek or Mark. I believe some of that may be having some issues coming across in the go to meeting. Are you guys seeing that OK? Yep. Great. Looks good to me. OK, good. Very good. So as you see, I can pop this up. And then you'll notice I'm sitting at a lovely little hotel restaurant. I can start to. Mark it up. There's another computer we're looking at. And there's my annotation. And there's, what is that? Some jam. Who knows? OK, so the point is, you get all kinds of interesting ways to capture multimedia, rich content, dynamic drop-down menus that change as you pick, whether it's a Ford and different choices there, or Chevy. I can make notes in my freeform cursive handwriting, save it just like that. And the last important thing, signing this electronically in a legally binding way. Once I sign this, it's going to become registered as a wet ink signature with an audit trail beneath it. That's legally binding. I can go ahead, hit the Finish button. It's going to produce the PDF document export, the CSV export, the image files. It's going to send all the data to wherever it needs to go, JD Edwards, Oracle, SAP, you name it. It's gone. It sends it out to approvers, managers, copies, prints, you know, all those kinds of things. So that kind of gives you an idea of how simple the user interface can be with all the smarts that you can build into it without all the back end things that are going to happen from there. Now, keep in mind, if you have any questions, burning questions that come up, you can chat those questions to Derek, and he's going to make sure we cover them. I want to cover one more example. I know there's probably some folks on here from healthcare organizations. I don't want you to feel left out. So we'll do one more quick example here, and then we'll jump over and look at a couple other things. So let's pretend now. We get to pretend to be a lot of things. It's kind of a fun job. Let's pretend you're a psychiatrist. So 
So as a psychiatrist, you're going to see a, a, a patient. So let's pick who the patient is. This list is coming from the electronic medical record. I pick the patient. Nice nondescript name like John Smith. I populate all this information in there. You'll notice uh, I've got a number of pages in this form. If I go ahead and say the patient's danger to themselves is a five, all of a sudden this is going to jump me dynamically to another page. That's actually a hidden page. And it's going to say, really, tell me more about that. And then I can start to put some information in here. And then I can go right back to my original page. I can go back here, put down what the patient's blood pressure is, a nice healthy 120 over 80. Let's say he's 160 pounds. And he's got depression because he doesn't have the software yet. And that's going to jump me over to another page where I can go ahead and put a bunch of other comments in there. There we go. And as I go back down, again, you see dynamically we can show different pages of content as necessary. So these form applications can be very interactive, very dynamic, popping up error messages and boxes and all those kinds of things. And regardless of how you're actually completing these, when I go ahead and finish it, I can produce whatever export I want. In this case, if I hit this button that says Show Report, you'll see I can take those three pages of data entry and condense them to a one-page document. So you, you have a lot of flexibility in how you can go ahead and produce different exports here, even though you might format it a different way when someone's actually completing it. So it gives you an idea of all, all the different options there, both on an inspection kind of use case as well as a healthcare use case. So I hope that's uh, informative. I've got a couple of quick things to show you. This is our website. Uh, but in the meantime, I do want to quickly touch on a, a bit of how our iPad and Android applications work. And the way these are set up to function, the uh, concept is the same, except these apps are functioning through touch. These devices are really more touch devices. So rather than use handwriting recognition and, and those sort of inputs, we're taking advantage of the device and its capabilities, and we're using touch. And so you're seeing here a quick screenshot of the design tool, which we'll take a look at as well. But as this is being applied, the server product is deploying this out to all the different devices you've got going on here. And what we're going to see is an example of the MyForms iPad app that you can download from the App Store and play with today at this very moment. But don't do it at this very moment, because then I will lose your attention. This is also available on the Google Play Android Store. So keep that in mind. Now here's an iPad. You open up the app on the iPad. You hit the button that says, I'm new to my forms. And there you get a paper-like form again. You can zoom in and out really easily. Yellow fields are, again, highlighted that are required. Makes it easy for you to go in and just type away on the virtual keyboard. So as you go through this process, you know, your yellow highlighting kind of goes away. So the same validation rules and logic are running. You're checking boxes with your finger. You can tap the button there, pull up the camera on the device, take a photograph or pull one in from the directory, take multiple photographs if you'd like. And once you throw it in there, you can actually pull it up and annotate on it, just using your finger or stylus. And you sign it just using your finger or stylus too. And when you're done with all that, you'll see the borders of the form are still red. That means you're still missing something. And you hit the Finish button, it's going to give you an error message, just like you saw before. What you're missing is the email, right? So when you go ahead and throw in the email address in here, it is then going to allow you to submit the form. The red border is going to turn green. You've satisfied all the rules on the form. So now you hit the Submit button. And moments later, the PDF document can show up in your email. The data can be sent to your database. And multiple things can all happen on the back end there. So that's a quick look at our application. And once you've done that, you'll have a few other ones to play with as well. So I encourage you to certainly go ahead and check that out as well as a, as a next step from here. But that gives you a quick look at our different user interfaces. Derek, as I'm pulling up the next uh, set of well, things to demonstrate, uh, if there's any questions that are coming up that are burning, I'd be happy to take them. Sure. Um, we did receive one question, and I think you actually covered it. Um, but just a quickly, quick, remi quick, excuse me, quick reminder for everyone on the call. 
Um, during your demonstration, you mentioned that you were presenting this on a Microsoft Surface tablet, and um, do you mind to just confirm for everyone, um, in particular on Android Galaxy tablets, if this software will work for them? Absolutely, yeah. On the uh, Android Galaxy tablets, it will work um, the same way as it does on the iPad that you just saw on the video. And you're welcome to try it. You're welcome to download the MyPhones app from the Google Play Store. You just have to search for MI-FORMS, MyPhones, and you'll get it right to your Android uh, tablet. Thanks, Gotham. And I actually got one more follow-up question for you, if uh, you'd like to take that now. Um, since the demos are being done offline and will sync once connected, um, this this attendee is just curious what the performance or what the impact on the performance is when it syncs, and also how fast is the system while online? It's a good question. Uh, the syncing is very elegant. It's done in a very uh, seamless way. So for the most part, users actually have no concept of what's going on. It's sort of happening in the background. On the Windows tablets, there's a piece of software called the MyForms Agent that sits in your system tray. It looks kind of like that. And it actually takes care of all the syncing and downloading of new versions and all that behind the scenes without really impacting performance at all. On the iPad and Android app, you hit a little button, and it does all the syncing for you. And, and as it's doing that as well, you can go ahead and do other things. So the syncing is set up to be uh, seamless in terms of affecting performance. Excellent. Well, um, that's the last question I've received for now. So um, feel free to continue on. Thank you, sir. So quick, next look we've got here is on the design side. So you saw how easy it is and some of the smarts you can put into these applications from the user side. So the users will actually go ahead and use it in a maximal way and adopt it. The next question is, how does this magic actually happen? So first of all, you know, when you start designing one of our form applications, you can do a number of things. You can actually use one of our partner tools called FormBridge and take a PDF document that you've got, a Word document, and convert it right into our format. So you can get started pretty quickly that way. You can also you start designing with the design tool. And if, you, you know, if you've got time constraints, you know, White Light Group is certified and trained to provide this for you as a service. So they can do all of this for you, set it all up very nicely as well. We've got some widgets, just like PowerPoint, on the left-hand side of the screen. So what you'll see on the left-hand side of my screen is a barcode scanning widget. You'll see GPS tracking widgets, voice recordings, photo capture, or just how about a simple checkbox. Let's pick a checkbox, drop it on here, tell the form something about the device size. I don't even have to be specific. I can throw some values on there, and there's my checkbox. Just as simply as that. I can drag it around, drop it where it needs to go, and it's as simple as that. Anybody can do that. It doesn't have to be a programmer. Now, to get to put some of those business rules that I showed you, it could also be quite simple. I can pick a, a rule, and I can set it equal to a, some sort of validation. If this particular one is saying, if this field is not empty or this field is not empty, then this field must not be empty. I can make this even more complex and say, if these two fields are not empty and this one's not empty, then this field over here must be less than this field over here. And let's add something else to that. And this is generating all the code to do that behind the scenes on its own. So you don't have to actually do it. Now, for the more sophisticated things, we are opening up a scripting window in VB.net and JavaScript and a variety of different uh, interfaces here. So you can go in and code pretty much anything that you need so this is where the forms really turn into applications that can do pretty much anything that you need. We've got the same kind of concept here with the JavaScript API as well, and so you can deploy to a variety of different platforms. So once you've designed everything that you want in the form and it's doing, it does all the magical things you need, the last piece of it is how do you actually get the data off the form? And we've got some out-of-the-box options for exporting, let's say, a PDF document, either locally or server-side, specific types of PDF documents with the values or the ink, specific pages. Maybe you want Outlook emails with attachments, sending it to our server software for workflow approvals, image files of different kinds, ODBC dump into a database, XML, CSV, just a wide variety of options. And let's say you pick the CSV format, you could even map field by field and say this field over here, I want it to map to, let's see, this field in my database. 
in your JD Edwards database. So you can be pretty specific in all that. And so when you finish the form, the database, uh, the database is automatically updated. So everything from the simple to the complex done right in this design tool. Anything that's not sort of drag and drop already, you can do with that scripting window. So there's pretty much no requirements you can't meet given the combination of all these tools. So there's a quick look at the design tool for you. The last piece of the puzzle is how is all this handled on the server side? So you've got a lot of things going on here. And the question is, you know, we talked about the server being kind of your quarterback, but make sure the right things are being sent to the right places. So on the server's web UI, what you see here, this is once you've designed a form, this is where you deploy it to the server. You can actually take, pick up a specific version and once you've deployed it, you can go ahead and control the version that's being exported, what's happening to it. All those kinds of things can be set up right here. And as that is going on, as my web browser is having a senior moment, let's wait for that to come back over. There we go. And okay, so well, you'll see I can control the version of what's being deployed, because as you all know, forms are not static. Requirements change, different things need to be collected, these need to be updated all the time. You can control who's allowed to fill it out, who's not. You can then track, you can control people's usernames and group and permissions. You can also track, this is a workflow queuing system that sends forms from one person's queue to another, sending them email notifications when they've got to approve something. And at the end of the day, the form can end up in this finished queue where I can track everything that happened to the form. What username opened the form and what time? What were all the steps that went through in its life cycle? Where it was exported? And by the way, we keep an image of the form as a backup. Just so if everything else explodes, and we've got a backup copy here, but the actual data is going to end up in your database where it's all been exported to. So you've got a complete nice set of audit trails here too. So the piece, all the pieces of the puzzle come together nicely to make a platform that fits almost any customer requirement, both within your department as well as across the company as a whole. So that's the closer look at this technology. I've got a couple of more quick slides to go through, and then we can truly break and take the rest of your questions. So now you've, you've seen how this is a very smooth and quiet operation. As this little screenshot will imply. We do want to leave you guys with some best practices that we've learned over 13 years. And this is just a small smattering of them. So having done these kinds of projects for 13 years, we've learned a lot about what succeeds, what fails, what are good things to keep in mind. And these are risky projects, right? I mean, these are not simple projects. When we're talking about these applications and apps. We're not, it's not something you just get from the App Store put on your tablet, digitize a form, and you're done. There's a lot of change management. There's a lot of user adoption, training. There's a lot of things that go into integration with your back-end systems, workflow processes that need to go right to make this a successful project. And user adoption is the key of this. What we found is these projects don't fail because technology is good or bad. They fail because of user adoption. Users find that if you push a solution on them that's not optimal, not user friendly, they'll just reject it and go back to using paper because they're pretty efficient using paper. So the big thing here is technology that's extremely user friendly that can be adapted to their process, not the other way around. So they can be enthusiastic about it. So you've got benefits for the users like pre-populating data. So it can actually make them more productive and save them time that, you know, things that are wasteful for them to do right now. So when those things happen, you get a great return on investment. Everybody's happy, project's a success, and everybody's uh, getting a good old time to go on there. So hopefully that tidbit is useful for you guys as you think about this. We've got a lot of other best practices we can share. So hopefully as you engage in dialogue with us, we can uh, bring some of that to light. I do want to leave you with a parting thought. Uh, who are some of the people we work with? I'm sure you're thinking, you know, uh, this is great. I want to do it next week. I'm going to be calling Mark and scheduling an appointment. We work with a lot of people in a lot of different industries to do these things. 
know, we worked with large hospital systems like Sutter Health, pharmaceutical companies like Eli Lilly, telecom companies like AT&T, state government agencies, federal government agencies, which are not having the best time right now at this very moment. So we've worked with all kinds of folks in different industries. And so we can work with you as well. And we can help you analyze your process, advise you, and make your project a success, just like we have for all these folks. So that brings to light uh, most of what I had to share today. I do want to share another poll question for you, and then we can open up for Q&A. Any questions, comments, compliments, concerns, we'll take them all. Thanks, Gotham, and I've opened that survey for everybody on the call today. Um, I'll go ahead and leave that open for a little while just to uh, give everybody a chance to answer. Um, we did get a couple questions, though, while, uh, while you were finishing up there. First question was about the, um, actually, when you mentioned the iOS component. Um, is this application possible and as smooth on an iPhone as well as an iPad? That's a good question. Thanks for the question there. Our, our technology does support the use of smartphones, although I will tell you this, that currently our tech, the iPad app is an iPad app. It is not an iPhone app. So if you try to get it on your phone from the App Store, you won't be able to. But you can actually pull it up on an HTML5 browser that is uh, supported on Safari. So at the moment, on a smartphone like an iPhone, you can only pull it up on a HTML5 browser. We are working on an iPhone app. It's probably going to come Q1 of next year. We do have an Android app that does uh, end up landing itself on, on the Android phones. And we have some enhancements to that we have planned as well. But primarily, what we found is our focus has been tablets. And the reason for that is a lot of knowledge workers spend a lot of time on these things, right? They spend anywhere from four to eight hours a day. And the small form factor of a phone is not very ideal for them to be filling out these complex business forms on. So really, the larger form factor is a much better choice. And it also helps maximize per user adoption. So hopefully, that helps you kind of understand the options uh, in device from device context, but also a little bit about why we're so heavy on tablets. Thanks, Gotham. And then, um, actually, the next question I received, um, this came in after you had mentioned that um, your the data could flow back into uh, JD Edwards, I believe, was the product you mentioned in particular. Um, this attendee was wondering about some of the other Oracle products, and in particular, PeopleSoft. Um, can the data flow into PeopleSoft easily? Yes, absolutely. And we have done integrations in the past with a variety of Oracle products. Uh, we are Our company at Myco is not an Oracle expert. That's why we partner with Wildlife Group. Wildlife Group is your Oracle expert. Uh, but we do use a variety of methods, like web services, APIs, different ODBC connections, flat file exchanges. There's a variety of methods that we use for these kinds of integrations. The platform has all the options. And a partner like Wildlife Group will work with you to kind of put the best integration scenario in place. Excellent. Thanks, Gotham. And um, that's actually the last question I've received for, um, for now. So if there's anything else you'd like to quickly summarize or um, cover, I think now would be a good time. But otherwise, I think we can um, go ahead and let you have your afternoon back. I will actually go ahead and close with saying that, uh, you know, I want to hand it back to Mark in a second. But my, my closing comment is that we've been helping businesses get more efficient and productive and save money and time for about 13 years. And we've had some great success doing that. And we would love to help you guys do that as well and earn your business. So we look forward to the dialogues and conversations with you. And if we can add value by advising in your strategy, then we'd be happy to do that as well. So I want to thank you for your time, and I want to turn it over to Mark to say some closing remarks, too. Thank you, Gotham, very much. I'd like to thank everybody, Derek, you included, for facilitating this this afternoon. And just wanted to remind everybody that uh, certainly they can uh, reach out to me directly. Uh, Gotham, if you want to maybe go back to the uh, uh, slide with our business uh, cards on it, but this will be posted, uh, I think, after the meeting. But uh, feel free to contact me via phone or email. Same with Gotham or Pete. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody at InFocus or Collaborate. Thanks, Mark. And um, I would just like to quickly thank everybody on the call today. Um, Gotham, you in particular, for sharing your expertise with everyone. Um, I know that uh, schedules can be a little bit difficult to get together this time of year, and so we're, we're thrilled to have you on the call and um, sharing your expertise with everyone today. And with that, um, I'd like to thank all the attendees out there for joining us for today's webinar session, Mobile Data Capture, Key to Business Automation,
brought to you by White Light Group and Quest Online Learning. And now everybody, on the, every, excuse me, everybody on the call can be on the lookout for a session evaluation arriving shortly after the conclusion of this presentation. And then um, once again, we will be, we did record this session and we'll be posting it in the on-demand library at questdirect.org, and that'll be available for you on Monday of next week. And then I'll go ahead and reach out to all the attendees and explain how to access that once that is available for you. And then if you do have any questions for us, you can feel free to send me an email at onlinelearning at questdirect.org. We'll be happy to pass those questions along. Thanks, and we hope to see everyone soon on another Quest Online Learning event.